And good evening, I'm Mike Vakovkan here at Shelligan's Bar and Grill in Hopewell for our Monday edition of the Matt Weiss Coaches Show, but obviously you can see Coach Weiss is in here. We're joined by head coach of the Hopewell Junior High Championship football team, Mr. Craig Bocar. And uh, first of all, we want to pa pass along our condolences to Matt and his family. He's had a last, uh, last couple weeks, he's had uh, some tough times. So we didn't have a show last week. His uncle passed away, and unfortunately over the weekend, his grandmother passed away this weekend, and he's at a service this evening. So Coach Bocar is stepping in, pinch hitting, and we appreciate you joining us, Coach. Yes, absolute honor. Thank you. And uh, first of all, congrats. Thank you. Uh, as we like to say, winning is fun, and you guys have done a uh, heck of a lot of winning this year, 6-0. You finished the regular season 3A championship uh, by, uh, I, I write this a lot in the articles, dominating, dominating has been, it's sort of an understatement the way you've uh, <laughs> uh, whipped through opponents this year. Only two teams have scored this year. Um, the big news is we thought maybe after the Aliquippa game that that was going to be it. You guys were going to finish 6-0, and but Newcastle beat Avonworth, which sets up now a championship game, the Western PA Junior High Big School Championship Wednesday night over Tony Dorsett Stadium yep. between you and Newcastle. Uh, thoughts on that and how excited are you? Yeah, so I, I, I couldn't be more a second. First of all, I just want to uh, I want to thank uh, Mike and Hopo Sports Nation for the just continuing uh, just the great coverage and the exposure that they're getting to not only uh, uh, my team and my program, uh, but the, the varsity team and then every other, uh, the volleyball, baseball, youth sports. I mean, it's just been, uh, it's been astronomical, the attention that uh, Mike and the time that he's put in. I mean, going to these, all these games is not easy when he has kids of himself playing too. Um, so uh, I just want to thank you guys for that. And it's an honor to be here tonight. But uh, to answer your question, man, I, I couldn't be more ecstatic. Uh, we get an opportunity to play a very good team out of Newcastle. Uh, they earned their side of the schedule. They beat everybody. We beat everybody. And uh, for our athletic directors to get together to, to put us to go toe-to-toe, -to, -toe, uh, to, to measure ourselves against uh, the, one of the best teams out there, uh, we couldn't be happier for the challenge. What is this? You know, I, I know you're going to say, and you mean it. It's not just coaches speak. It's about the players. Sure. But uh, you're a Hopewell guy. Yeah. Uh, you live and breathe Hopewell sports uh, not just football but sports in general but football is your forte sure. what did this mean to you this year six and oh uh bringing pride back to the youth ranks uh developing a lot of players this season you got one more mile left one more chapter to write here but it's uh it's been a magical season it has and uh, th this goes back almost eight years now. Um, myself, uh, uh, a group of parents, uh, one being uh, you know, famous coach Doug Biega, uh, Craig El Kimbrough, Paul Mann, uh, you know, we decided that enough was enough. And we saw some potential in the group that we had, and we decided that it was time for us to come around them, really push them, um, and get them going in the right direction. And if you follow our history, you know, we've won at every level. Last year, our, our basketball team hadn't lost a game in a year. They went an entire year and then an entire AAU season with our Hopewell players without losing a game. I mean, that's that's impressive. Yeah. So they've done a lot of winning, and that even went back to baseball too. So these kids, they know what it's like to be pushed. They know what it's like to work. They know what it's like to to give up what they have now for uh, something that they want in the future. So um, that has very little to do with me and a lot to do with them and their character and their parents trusting me and trusting uh, my group and my uh, coaching staff to uh, really develop them. So to me, being a Hopewell guy, watching these guys come up and do what they've done, man, we've accomplished a lot, but I mean, it's just the beginning. Um, we're looking forward a couple years down the road now to seeing something really special, and we think that we have the opportunity to do that. Is it guaranteed? No, but I promise you we're going to work for it. So, um, you know, coming off a two-win season last year, uh, seeing the dedication that these kids put in, the time they put in. Um, I gave you an example earlier. Uh, we had one of our old coaches, Coach Joe Folletta, uh, who is uh, our, probably our winningest basketball yeah. coach of all time, reached out to me and said, hey, I, I want to come and talk to your kids. He came tonight 
um, out on the field before practice and he talked to the kids about what it is to be a winner, what it is to be a Viking and what it takes. And um, I've had countless calls over the last couple of days and, and people coming up to me and just saying how proud they are, how happy they are to see these kids out there on Sunday afternoons uh, in full pads just getting after it. And that's just, that has nothing to do with me, man. It just has the, the kids, they're willing to work and, you know, they, they want change. They want something different. They got a taste of winning and they like it. So, um, you know, we'll be there as long as we can to guide them. You mentioned uh, these kids have been winners in every sport, and last year was a uh, a speed bump. Mm. It was something that they weren't used to. Two wins. I remember actually seeing you here yeah. uh, one night yeah. uh, having dinner, and you mentioned you you, you were in disbelief mm. as far as uh, the fact that you know what was going on last year. How much of that was a motivation uh, for not only you, but also the players to say, this isn't going to happen two years in a row? Yeah, uh, culture change, is, it, it's difficult. Um, I, I went back and I talked to colleagues and coaches who have been through it before, and I was reminded that the first year that we took over at the youth program, we didn't have a great year, but the next year we went to the championship. We beat Aliquippa and we played Beaver Falls for the championship, and we, we came up as runners-up, but... I mean, we, we went and ran through the youth program the same way we ran through the junior high program this year. Um, so it seems like it takes us a, a year to get our culture involved, uh, to get everybody on board, to get an off season, because the off season for us is the most important thing. So for us to get through a season and get an off season in and get our offense established, uh, get our work ethic in, get our training going, um, it's been a consistent pattern. So um, yeah, last year was upsetting. I was, I was questioning myself, I was questioning um, you know, a lot of things, but once we put it into perspective and we got back into the lab and we got back to work, I knew that we had something special. People want to win and they, uh, you know, they say they want to win, but it doesn't just happen like, it doesn't happen like that. No. Talk about what goes into your, uh, your off season. You talk about it a lot. That's where you win the games. Sure. Yeah. So the, the regular season is, you know, you technically you win and you get the, win in the standings by uh, you know winning on the field but if you don't put in the work in the off season that's not happening just you know, just, just give a quick just talk about what your off season and what you demand of your kids in the off season yeah Mike uh, games are fun right uh, games are one in practice and that's the sentiment that we get across to the kids every week if you're not working on Sunday you're not winning on Wednesday um, and we have a unique schedule um, I think before uh, our group took over because since you play in the middle of the week, I think the kids were only practicing once or twice a week, and just that just wasn't acceptable for me. Um, yes, we practice on Fridays. Yes, we practice on Saturdays, and we practice on Sundays. I mean, and uh, that's a testament to the parents. I know people have a lot going on, but so do I. I have five children and, and five different sports and everything, but you know we carve out the time, and, and you know that's yeah. necessary. Our off season program is led by Cradell Kimbro. Um, I mean, and, and for him to be as generous as he is with his time and such an influence on our kids, uh, that gym is open whenever you want it to be open. It's open at 5 o'clock in the morning. I'll tell you, we have a handful of kids that go and train at 5 o'clock in the morning before school, go to school, and then come to practice. I mean, and they do that on their own. That is not mandatory. So uh, our off-season program is tough, and I expect a lot out of it, and I expect you to be there. Um, we go five days a week in the off-season, whether that's weight room, conditioning, or just on the – on the board or even watching film. I mean, that's, I encourage all of our kids, uh, you know, we're, we're texting them, I'm sending them TikTok videos of, of the proper way to play defense or, um, you know, the right stances and, and starts and everything. But it all starts with coming together in the off season, bringing everybody, you know, being respectful of every schedule. It's not overworking them or doing anything crazy, but um, just following that formula. So when the season rolls around, we're in shape, we're ready to go. And practice is just practice. You know, it, it's, we're getting after it. And then when the games come, it's fun. I always tell the kids that the games are fun, man. You, you execute what you did in practice. The people are screaming your name. The girls are cheering for you. Your name's over the announcement. You get write-ups on Facebook. I mean, that's fun. You earn it on Sundays. You earn that win on Wednesday on Sunday, and that's what we believe. Before we start talking about, uh, you know, your team this year, uh, you know, I, I know you're the face of the program, yeah. but you'll also be the first person to talk about uh, – the help and the assistance you just mentioned, sure. uh, Coach Kimbrough, Coach Matt. Well, can, yeah. can you just talk about the impact and 
uh, you know, the work and what they've done, what they mean to the program. Yeah, and, and let me mention this, and I know the wins and losses, you know, my name goes on them, but uh, Jessup Pator, he's been my right-hand man to these for eight years. I mean, he's been there every single day with me, even when we started back in flag football. And we, we same thing there, we ran the, we say, well, there, we won four, four flag championships with this group in a row. I mean, um, that's what kind of started our, our progress moving forward. So Jess has been there, Tony Amadeo, um, Paul Mann and CJ, Coach CJ. I mean, they, in the summer, they would run an entire three hour workout with the varsity and then come out for another two hour workout with us. I mean, their dedication, the time they put in, I, I couldn't do without them. I mean, I'm, I run the offense and I give and I trust CJ, I trust uh, uh, Coach Mann. And I trust Cradell to run the defense. And Coach Cradell comes in, he puts some new wrinkles on the offense, and you know it, we're built out of trust. That's what it is. We come in, we converse, we talk about things, and we say, hey, what needs to be different this week? Um, you know, what do we need to change? We talk about discipline. But without those guys, man, I, and trust me, I don't want to take any credit at all because if they're not there, I can't do anything. I'm uh, they're up running the drills with the kids. I'm just overlooking it. So, um, and then I'm just I'm, uh, I'm calling plays during the week and. Uh, their input during the game because I look for it too. Hey, coach, what do you want to do here? What do you think we should do here? I'm still asking questions because I'm still learning. Yeah. You know, I haven't been coaching as long as these guys. So, you know, and then also I'd be worse to uh, mention Coach Biega. You know, he's a basketball coach, but uh, him and, and his father, they sit on the outside and they advise and they help me as much as I can. They tell me things they see. Um, hey, Boak, we could do this better. Uh, we could manage the clock a little bit better here. Let's pay attention to that. So I have people on the outside help me out too. Uh, Coach Craig Bocar joining us here on the Matt Weiss Coaches Show here on Hopewell Sports Nation. Um, Coach, uh, let's get into a few players here. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to let anyone out, but we're going to, you know, we'll talk about the 2023 team. Yeah. Uh, anyone that's seen the team knows, you know, there's a, you know, there's, the big four, big five. Yep. Those guys have had a lot of pressure. Yeah. Uh, the other teams know we got to stop these guys. They have the target on their backs, but every single game they're able to deliver. Um, let's just talk about two, and then we'll move on. Yeah. Brody and uh, Boo Boo. Uh, do they ever cease to amaze you with what uh, their growth this year and the way they've been able to? literally dominate games this year yeah so i can talk about a couple um you know you're you're gonna get the headlines with boo boo yeah. uh, looks the part intelligent good kid um i consider him i consider him part of my family um watching him grow up and watching him develop has been special and not only he's just so willing to learn and he trusts me so much and and, and you know i i don't want to pull all our business out there but i mean there are times in games when he calls plays, when he tells me, because if you watch our games, you see him and I, I don't go off a wristband. I need to, I, I want to talk to him. I want to look in his eyes when I call a play. And he goes, coach, I, I want to do this. I think this is open. Let's run this. And we did it. Um, there's some specific examples, but I'm not going to, I'll get in those in, right. after the season. But uh, Boo Boo, bro, I mean, we have at least, I mean, uh, and I, I'll, I don't talk to about him much, but my son, Avery Bokar plays, uh, hands down has the best hands. Um, uh, in the league, uh, if you throw it to him, he's going to catch it, um, and it, it, guaranteed. Um, and uh, Trey Cameron, his speed, yeah. his smoothness, he looks like he's floating on air when he runs. Uh, Brody Rock, I mean, just he didn't even have a good game against Aliquippa last week and scored four touchdowns. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and honestly, he didn't play well, and we told him that. He didn't play well. He looked out of shape, and he got tired. And, and again, we're going to jump him for that because we expect more. But, I mean, uh, uh, those kids, they just have. They it's, hard, have a, it's hard to live up. Yeah. It's hard to live up to the hype. Yeah, it is, especially at that age. Sure, and they they got some eyes on them now, and you know yeah. I think they accept it, and I think they're ready for it. Um, and if they continue to work, and they stay together, and they do the right things, it's going to be a very special group. And um, I think a lot of them are going to get have the ability to play next year, uh, especially James. Uh, yeah. Uh, if he's not on the field in some capacity, it would be a shame. Now, now I'm going to ask a touchy question here. Sure. This, is, this is always, you're not the only coach to deal with this. Sure. How hard is it to coach your kid? Uh, you're calling plays. You know, you, you know your kid's talented. 
Sure. Uh, you have other talented kids out there. You want to get everyone the ball. You're also coaching your kid, you know. Sure. How, how hard is it when you're the play caller to – or have you been able to separate at this point? He's, he's Avery mm-hmm. and he's not my son. Or, yeah. or, or, or is that – Sometimes difficult. It's tough, and it's it's definitely difficult. And I've I've sought advice on it, and I, I rarely ever talk about Avery. I have other people do it for yeah. me. Um, but I, I tell you, I, I I trust him with with anything. He know he'll actually correct me sometimes if I make a, if I call the formation wrong. He'll correct me. He knows every position. Um, he's capable of playing quarterback when we need him to play quarterback. Um, you see that we we put him in there. Yeah. And like I said, I, I if if he didn't have the best best hands around, I wouldn't say it. Um, and he does. You throw him the ball, he catches it. Um, and, and he works hard. Uh, you know, he never – and just because he's, he's the coach's son, doesn't, he's never missed a practice, never missed a workout. And I can say that for Jack Viega. I can say that for Boo Boo. I can say that for Brody too. But, um, yeah, it's hard because, you know, you're always, hey, is he getting the ball because, you know, he, he's Boke's son. Um, but, but, no, I mean, we, yeah. we spread it around. I mean, yeah, I get him involved because he – Produces when you get in the ball. You can make plays. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and I'm not going to shy away from that. And if I believe that it, it's time for him to get the ball, and I call his number, I'm going to call his number, and I'm trusting he does it, just like I trust anybody else. And uh, the thing about me, and you'll know, um, yes, Avery's my son, but all of these kids are my kids. I mean, we've grown. I've watched them grow since, and they're at my house almost every day. I mean, I care about each and every one of them. So, but. Uh, yeah, it's always tough because there's always that scrutiny on when you're coaching yes. your kid. But I'll take that scrutiny every day because he's proofs in the pudding. All right, we're you know we've talked about the big four, big five, yep. uh, but you also know that football is a team sport. It's yeah. 20, twenty-two guys. Well, let me let me let me mention this too, and I'd be remiss if I didn't. Aiden Gonzalez, number yep. forty-three, our kicker. He's our offensive. He's our starting guard. He's gorgeous. He looks like Superman if anybody saw him. Plays like Superman sometimes too. He hasn't missed a kick in yeah. in five weeks um, under pressure. And I ask him to play guard. And he goes and plays a full soccer, soccer game, game. Yeah. and then comes and plays a full football game. I'm exhausted watching him. I couldn't imagine. I'm always on these kids about how I played offense and defense. I never came out of down. He's playing a full soccer game, scoring eight goals and then coming and kicking field goals and knocking people on their butts. I mean, I, I, I just the commitment that he's had to our program, The his dad, Jose, who's a soccer guy and runs part of our soccer program, for him to move things around, for Aiden to be a part of our team and be a part of our group and our culture has just been amazing. And then our young guys too, uh, we even said it, they don't get this, they don't get the same recognition as everybody well, see, else. See, that's but, what I wanted to, that's yeah. what I'm gonna ask you. What, you know, we hear about the big guys, but it takes it takes more than, you know, Boo Boo's not gonna do it unless he has people in front of him. Yeah. Who, who are some of the other guys on yeah. the team that maybe you, you wanna see get written about or talked about that maybe do, uh, that don't and sure. so you you've already just started that yeah and it makes me you know it makes me smile because i'm a i'm a lineman you know yeah i grew up and you know i but i don't coach the line coach cj does i coach the the skill positions which is funny but i mean our line this year the last four weeks i mean they have have you seen boo boo under pressure much i haven't no. um you know they've been moving people around and this was a brand new we got Caden cullen uh, our, our new guys, new to the program, first-year football players at Garden Tackle. We have Bentley Taylor holding down to me. Bentley's been with me for years, too. Uh, another guy I trust. Another guy that knows every play, knows every position, tells everybody what to do. He's he's the quarterback of the line, and he's the center, and you got to be that. Um, Levi Lose that came in brand new to us this year. I'd watched him since he we had coached him when he was younger, and he was one of the guys I was watching last year that I was excited to come up. But um, just the way they've come together and the way they've gelled and just learned. I mean, it was it was a struggle in the beginning of the year. We, haven't, we, we, were, we were having trouble with our left and our right, and I'm racking my brain on how to teach these kids. But that's a testament to Coach CJ, who came in and just was patient with them. Um, and sometimes, and I wasn't as patient, he was, um, getting our concepts down. But, you know, all those kids, they have such a bright future. And I said, once we get in the full, because we never had an off season with them. Right. So once we have an off season with these guys, and we introduce them to the weight room and our conditioning program, and just you know, getting in, getting in the on the in the lab on the chalkboard. I mean, sky's the limit for him, man. It really is. And then that sophomore group that's up there right now at the varsity that's moving up, and uh, and how hard those guys work. I mean, do, all those guys coming together and gelling. And we even did. We worked together in the in the yeah. summer. Uh, we had a lot together, of you, right. you wrote about them, yeah. and those kids were helping each other out, man. And they were excited about that. So. To, to be able to see those kids develop together in the future, uh, it's a pretty good thing. I was a part of a really 
good offensive and defensive line, and that's the standard that I hold, and that's what I expect from them. So if we if we're able to get just a fraction of that, it'll be it'll be big for us. You're at every game. You see you see what's going on with yeah. the varsity team. We're gonna ask a couple more questions here, and then we're gonna wrap it up here. Yeah. But uh, uh, one kid that I marvel, I you know I don't want to use the word marvel, sure. but I, I think he's tough as nails, and he uh, he can play on my team eight days a week. Yeah. Is uh, Kingston. Yeah. Crotech. Uh, uh, that kid, you use the word in your post game a lot with your team, uh, dog. Yeah. You have a lot of dogs on your team. Yeah. Kingston's a dog. Yeah, and I, I've I've liked watching him play, especially develop playing as a freshman last year and coming to sophomore year. I know um, under a lot of pressure at times, stuff like that, and that's but you know watching him develop. He's a good kid, um, yeah. good leader, never gives up. Plays. Yeah. Uh, the most impressive thing that I saw that you know, and from the you know last couple of weeks haven't worked out how we wanted, but just it was funny to me. I. I I said to a, a coach friend of mine the other day, watching the varsity team play, they're 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 both winning and losing at the same time, meaning like they're losing the game, but their their effort, their attitude is there. Yeah. And the kids are playing hard, and they're you know you you see the passion, you see that they want to win, you see in practice too, practice hard. Um, coach Weiss has them out there, you know, and they're, they're they're running good practices. They're 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 doing the right things. You know what I mean? They just you know the, they'll get to that eventual outcome, but. Uh, man, he puts in the work every week. He's not he's not phoning it in, and I'd love to see him continue to develop either at that position or another one. Uh, just you know, his presence and being around the guys, um, he's been cool to watch. I've loved watching uh, Xander Muzzy, yeah. uh, 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 little JB, watching them too. I mean, uh, I was impressed by uh, you know and Trisilla, uh, the Vinny Bor- Boris kid. I'm just I'm impressed watching them run their routes and stuff like that. But I'm just thinking, man, what's once they get it all together and it gels and they start hitting, you know, uh, something special is going to happen. But not for lack of effort. Yeah. I can't say that in the past. But been watching them play and and watching them fight, they're not giving up, man. They're not laying down for anybody. And that's you got to start there. Yep. You really do. All right. Last thing is uh, the big day, Wednesday, six thirty. Yeah. You know, I know. Uh, you know, we're going to get this out as much as possible Wednesday night. Uh, you know, it's a championship. Yeah. Uh, the baseball team won a championship uh, this past year. Sure. You guys won the regular season championship, but this would obviously be a little bit more. So I know you're encouraging uh, Wednesday night the weather is going to be okay. You're yeah. encouraging to uh, let's fill up uh, Tony Dorsett Stadium. Yeah, man. I, I would love to see everybody out there supporting the team. You know, no matter the outcome, uh, you know, this team's earned the right to be where they're at. Um, it'll be a great game. Newcastle's a great team. I'm looking forward to playing them. Um, uh, we played. We went toe to toe with them, the same group, uh, two years ago, and youth, and it was a great game. Um, I'm looking forward to some of the players that they have to watching them play, and uh, you know, kind of measuring ourselves against there. And you know, to be the man, you got to beat the man. So uh, people tell me they're the man. So you know, that's what we got to go after. So uh, I would encourage people to come out, uh, get to know the kids, get to know their names and numbers. You see my wife; she'll be passing out a roster, so you, so you make sure you have those names and numbers. But uh, you know, the the community support means so much even if people don't even realize it if they're just coming out for a game that just them being there and cheering that means so much to the kids because you know this is a small town and i've been a part of when this small town comes together and it's special and it's something i'll never forget and it's something that i really hope that my kids my children and that my kids on this team get to experience um because when we come together hope was a really cool place and we have a lot of tradition and, and people forget that i mean look how many studs we've had come out of this place yep um but not even football basketball players baseball players i mean we we've, we've got a hall of fame for a reason i mean this place is rich tradition and for me uh you know i know as, as, as part of the state championship team in football i'm a member of the hall of fame but to me if these kids reach that pinnacle that'll be my that'll be personally my greatest uh being a part of my greatest accomplishment and um having the community behind us will be very special and there you got it. Wednesday night, 6.30. Hope all Sports Nation will be there. We appreciate uh, head coach Craig Bocard joining us. And uh, all the, once again, uh, condolences to Matt Weiss. Uh, he'll be joining us next Monday. Hopewell is at on the road this week uh, at West Mifflin. We'll have coverage of that as well. But uh, we appreciate you tuning in. And we'll be back here at Shelligan's Bar and Grill next Monday for another edition of the Matt Weiss Coaches Show. Let's go, Vikes.